Come check out the new Sisters Braid 2 Hair Braiding and Natural Hair Care Salon, located at 18070 Mount Elliott Street. Our new salon is spacious with adequate parking, Wi-Fi, and all brand new state-of-the-art salon equipment. Come meet your local hair braiders and natural hair care specialists, and check out our many hair care services, such as hair treatments, box braids, corn rolls, tree braids, Havana twists, children's braids, natural twists, lock extensions, kinky twists, goddess locks, updos, full weaves, and more. Please Please feel free to visit us on the web at www.sistersbraid2.com or call 313-826-0498. Here at Sisters Braid 2, we offer exceptional care for exceptional hair. We look forward to seeing you. Sisters Braid 2 is a proud recipient of the Unity and Rebuilding Fund. SOS Graphic Design provides agency quality professional graphic design services from established companies to startups and individuals, creating a simple logo to complete rebranding and delivering visual communication with print media. Everything SOS Graphic Design does has a single unifying objective, to set your business apart. We are at your service. Call 313-342-2166. That's 313-342. 342-2166 or online at www.sosgraphicdesigns.com. This is the real Campu, keeping all my people unified. Please be sure to download my album, Campu, Birth of a New Nation, and my two latest hit singles, My People Rise and Be Good to Us with voiceover skits, with inspirational poetry, hip-hop, and harmony. Download your MP3 single copy of My People Rise and Be Good to Us with voiceover skits or the album Birth of a New Nation, all available on iTunes, Amazon, and other online stores. Don't forget, Birth of a New Nation by Campu. We would like to invite you to help support the efforts of the Unity and Rebuilding Fund. Visit the website at www.unityandrebuildingfund.com. That's www.unityandrebuildingfund.com. We often hear how we need to work together and rebuild the city, and we're actually doing it. You can make online donations and click on links to track the progress of the Unity and Rebuilding Fund. And for more information, 313-868-0000 is a local number. Again, 313-868-0000. Support the Unity and Rebuilding Fund. <laughs> This is Penny Love. Come rock it out with me and the crew at our next Zumba class every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday at Northwest Activity Center. And, and, and I say that because I'm just so excited because, I mean, it has to be something that, you know, for, for, for what's happening today, to come out of Norman Whitfield's mouth, you know, that he wrote a long time ago, but, I mean, he just vision is just, you know, I see what they're trying to do. I see what they're trying to do. We figured out a long time ago we're going to have a problem with the radio. The past. Norman passed. Yeah. About, he's been gone about almost 10 years now. Yeah. Yeah. He had diabetes, you know, and um, the, uh, the music lives on. Yes, sir. The music lives on, and 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 I, so I say that about the music because a lot of folks have to. I mean, and especially you know, we understand that we used to use music. I mean, we use music all the way back to slavery. People don't understand uh, Wade in the Water. I didn't understand it till I went to uh, California about three years ago to uh, do the music the soundtrack for the um, uh, the Nat Turner story. And in doing that, one of the, the ladies that was, was putting it together, she had a whole book on that term. She said, maybe you need to read some of this so you can have an idea about lyrics. So when I started reading stuff that we never had an opportunity to read or be taught about Matt Turner and those eras and the things that they were talking about, how smart black folks were because they could not understand nothing that we were talking about. Reading the world it in the water, chill. So they don't feel so what it is. You know, so we uh, we had a lot of fun trying to do that. They shut us down. 
They wouldn't let us tell the whole story. <laughs> oh, you know, we was telling it. And, you know, and I was like, how are we going to say anything about these kind of incidents in these films? And they had it in there. And we were, we were doing it. The, the person that I was working for said, just do what you got to do. We're going to see if it's, if it's going to get past the, the, the pastors. You know, and they, 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 they didn't want all that now. I mean, I mean, I, I, I read some of that book. I had to close it because I cried. I mean, I just to think about what we went through trying to be free when there was no way, to, no roads to run to. You know, everywhere you go, somebody was looking at you. How you doing? How what? You know, and I think about that today. You know, just leaving out the house without a wallet. You know, and those folks, I mean, when they were trying to escape and get away from the stuff that we just sit around and be stupid because we can't get away and, try and don't have nothing to do. I may sound a little angry, but I am angry. Well, let me tell you something. If I'm this, spurious emotions, the problems rise. It's like the reason people cry. We cry. When we are confronted with the problem that we don't have the solution to, right. we get angry when things happen to us that we don't understand, especially bad things being done to us when we don't know why it's being done. But once we understand and accept that if God said, you to Abraham, your seed will be a stranger in a land that's not there, and they're going to serve him, and they're going to afflict him for 400 years. I learned to stop being angry about that and try to learn, more important, why did God let it out? And now I know why. Because we weren't supposed to <laughs> shed blood to get out of sin. We're supposed to use our minds and learn how to solve problems without murdering one another. And once you learn how to do it yourself, then you can bring peace to the earth. Well, I think in large measure, I would say that our music is solution oriented. There. <laughs> That's, but you notice, we're a winner. <laughs> Never let anybody say, boy, you can't win. Curtis Mayfield. That's Mayfield. a feeble mind. Right. That's right. That's right. right. That's why I mean you can't make it because your mind too feeble to figure out the answer. Right. So don't let nobody tell you that that, because of, that you can't make it because a feeble mind. We are a winner. We are a winner. winner. Yes. We are. Ain't nobody going to tell you that. Ain't it's nobody going to tell you that. But I'm saying for, so for us, I see that as being true. The reason why I hooked up with this group. And that's when I became a manager and even wanted to, is because I saw the music was solution oriented. Yes, that's what the music was. That's what you said. And that's and that's what I was about when we met. Yes. So mm -hmm. so that's so I wouldn't have done I had friends in the music business, my good friend uh, George Washington Ware from Snickers and you know, only really helped and he that that was my one my uh, people I looked up to. He uh, is the one who Put together a lot of songs and, and it's thrust for Gavin and Hunt. See, in Philadelphia. And he says, man, we were in Smith in the South. He said, man, you know what? Those guys up, those guys up there in, uh, in, uh, in Philadelphia and Detroit, we need to go up there and take what we know and have them put them in their music because they've got the heart of the people. We down here fighting in Mississippi. Uh, I was in the uh, Alabama and Tennessee, he said, man, look, if we take what we know and put with those guys up there who seem to have the heart of people have to do it in song, we can make this thing work. And so I came to Detroit and George went to, uh, he went to uh, uh, Philadelphia. But the difference is, he hooked up with Dylan Hus right away. I, I never found that, I didn't know there were people here, I didn't know the folk who wanted to make message music so much in Detroit. The ones I knew were going to make love music. <laughs> and so, but so when I heard uh, Joe talking about what the Understood Truth was about, I said, that's the same thing I'm about. Mm -hmm. And so we're making message music. And our songs 
Most of our songs say something. They speak to the people, and they speak to the people with different sense of who they are. And the music also is the music of hope. You know, I don't think you need any if you don't have hope. So this is the music of hope. Uh, and that's how what I think what the group means to me. That's why the group means the management is so very important. Because I can see when people hear this music, they hear the quality of the musicianship, I can see them changing, you know. I can see them changing and dancing at the same time. Because we're always going to dance. You can't, that's where jazz made a mistake. We took, we took the dance out of the jazz. When I was young, jazz was dance music. But I used to dance to uh, Amal Jamal Pointe. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like, like I was a dancing. My parents, my mother was a damn professional dancer. My mother's partner was Man Tan Morton. From Charlie Chance Project. I, I said, Who that say who that when I say who that? <laughs> that, was, yeah. <laughs> that was my mother's dancing partner. They had a team called Man Tan and Tony. My mother was Tony. And they were involved in the dance. And Miles Davis came along and took. They took the dance out of the music, and they took the dance out of the music. I think they took the music away from the base of the people. That was my, that was my view. I've come to have that view. And so I see uh, right now the other spirit of truth linking together uh, the spirit of the people and the feeling of the people. And the music does all that. And, uh, and being, had the opportunity to work with someone like Joe, who's gone through the Undisputed Truth, uh, the Ohio Players, uh, Rolls Royce, uh, the movie Car Wash. Yes. I mean, someone asked me, why'd you involve yourself with Joe Pep? I said, well, me, it was like somebody give you a job, say, you can work here, but you've got to work with the top person. I said, hold on, Joe Pep. That's easy to me. Easy. And I heard Daisy sing, and Daisy... You know, hearing Jackie sing, and then later BJ. I mean, the group works well together. The other thing is, we all just work so well together. Yes. You know, we just, I mean, we're really our team. No one's worried about who's in charge and all that kind of stuff. Tell you a funny story. Fella tried to hire me, hire the group. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't mention the name. He said, you want to hire me? You know, the truth. You understand? You'd imagine. I said, yes. So how much, um, how much you charge? You can, I said, I don't know. So I have to speak with the group. I said, he said, I thought you would imagine. I said, I am. But if you'd imagine, you're supposed to make decisions. I said, no, we don't operate that way. We make collective decisions. I said, you bring it to me. I'll take it back to the group. We'll sit down and talk about it. And he said, I never heard any kind of manager like that. I said, that's the kind of this is. And you will not be hearing from us until we meet. And that's how we operate, you know. Uh, and he was accustomed to you know, the manager like managers years ago, the manager who, Louis Armstrong, man, they would make money. Louis never never even knew my father, Louis Armstrong, very good friend. He didn't know how much he made. He didn't know how much he made. All he knew was he got. Duke Gunther's guys the same way. What they know, what they got, which was more than most folk were making. Yes. But they didn't know how much there was on the table. Those other guys were becoming multimillionaires off of them. Off of the county. Mm -hmm. I said, and we're not going to do that. He said, we're going we to be transparency. And everybody's going to know everything about what we do. And the other thing we said, we're going to practice gender equality. The men ain't going to run, join out of men. The men ain't going to run this group. We, this, is, this is an equal group. Yes, we recognize gender equality in our group. Yes. I never heard of a group like that, so that's what this one is. Yes. So that's how we, you know. So I think we're a different kind of group. Our method of operation is different. Our purpose of the music is different. You hear the music, you be able to hear the quality of their voices, and you hear the wonderful musicians that they have behind them. I mean, the tremendous Detroit music. But the part where we're trying to sell Detroit. Yes, sir. <laughs> Everybody keep worrying about this vacation. I'm saying, look, just do what we do. <laughs> I'm prepared to be with anybody head up. You do what you do, let me do what I do. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, you just keep it fair. That's all I ask you to do, just try to keep it fair. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we think we can sing and dance and produce with anybody in the world. We're not worried about what anybody else does. We're worried about what we do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Mm-hmm. See, a lot of folks don't, I mean, and, and just you're playing off of what Dan just said, and, uh, you know, and when we were, when, when, when people call now to say, undisputed truth, wow, uh, uh, we don't know if we can afford that. Listen, it's been a long time since any black artist or black act today had any kind of radio power. It's a whole new world since the internet has has happened, and I'm not stupid. I'm putting a new group together. I mean, a new group in the sense that we are carrying on a brand that we started, and in, 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 in doing so, we have to consider the folks that helped us, as yourself, you know, that they, they can fall in to what we were about to get to where we were. We're not hot. There's no hotness about this. So we... We want to be able to, to not overprice ourselves when we work, you know, and if it makes sense, we put the weight on Dan, I told him, I said, don't try to uh, to come up with the price. It's got a lot to do with what we got to do to do it, you know, where it's at and what we got to do to do it. I think that we can work more if we operate it that way rather than just saying, telling everybody this is what we get, we want. Uh, $100,000 for a weekend or some stuff like that. And then it's not like that. We try to work. We're trying to spread, spread our message. We're trying to afford it, you know. So, I mean, when we, I've been doing this too long, so I'm not worried about anybody taking advantage of us because we're doing what we want to do, you know. And if it's beneficial, beneficial for us to do it, you know, then we're going to be trying to do this. why well, we've always stayed in, in contact with you because we, we saw the prospects there. You know, we say, well, this is a jump. We can come here and stay down here a month and work all across the south. I mean, right back and forth. See, and on the recording, on the recording side, this is a media savvy age. So we're working and learning. The music industry is changing so rapidly. So we're understanding how to, with this new music, we're understanding how to get in on the ground floor of this new age of um, media savvy. Through, uh, we're going to be doing some video uh, projects and to get our music out, and we're going to. Um, be more uh, involved with the youth in order to do what they do to get their music out. It's not a set pattern anymore. You make your own world. What works for you is going to uh, is going to be what works for you. So we're understanding what works for us. Yeah, well, it's a high school, junior high, and elementary school. Right there, you know. We all get a chance, and, and, and it's a lot of churches. Yes. Mm-hmm. And just, you know, you know, uh, moving to music and listening to messages in music, I learned that in church. That's right. They had a, they had a time in church where they had message in song. Mm-hmm. They, they, uh, Reverend Bradley would get up and say, uh, well, we don't have a choir to give us a message in song. So I just learned to listen the songs the message. for messages. Yeah. And I, I, I took that on through, throughout my life. Mm-hmm. And that's what, that's what uh, you know, I think most, most of us did that. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. one point was probably the top woman speaker in the United States and, and could command all kinds of cities. And so she said, Dan, I want you to handle my, you know, handle my booking. And I said, okay, I'm going to handle your booking. She was handling her booking. So I said, well, what do you want me to do? So I had, who came and said, we're going to put four of you on. Small black group. And my, our daughter said to me very clearly, she said, let me tell you something, Danny. She said, what's the biggest compliment you can have? I said, the biggest compliment you can have is to have your people think that you have something to say that they think is worth hearing. She said, with that in mind, when you book my acts, you make sure first that the people booking me can afford to book me. So if they can't afford it, we'll do it. But we make enough off the big people to take care of the small people. So what I want to know is that my people think that what I have to say is something they think 
worth listening to. Yes, she sir. said, and that'll be your guy. Yes, sir. And that was my guy. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Well, I'm, I'm just, uh, you know, as, you know, the more we talk, the more we talk to others, the more you start to see how much we are think alike, yeah. and we couldn't help but think alike in many ways because we are come from the same, same experiences. Yes, sir. You know, same right. You know, I, it's not a one of us. I mean, when you start talking about how you suffered and how you was abused and you was a child and all that stuff, well, welcome to the club. <laughs> you know, we, we are always there. there. That's right. You know, that ain't a, but, but you ain't that child no more. Stop letting people make you carry baggage from childhood into yeah. adulthood. Yes. You know, people did all kinds of stuff to me when I was a child. I forgave all that stuff and moved on. Yes. And that's what we all need to be trying to do. You, you got all this talent. That suffering that we suffered, all, we, all that was basically for was to teach us not to do that to nobody yeah, else. Yes, that's right. That's what it was for. I used to think that my father was so totally mean. But, man, <laughs> <laughs> I tell people, look, <laughs> my father, look, I'm telling you, all people have to say was, I'm going to tell your mother, I'm going to tell your father when he gets on say, no, 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 mother, no. He broke out into the same time. Telephone. I'm in tears and she's in New York. So I'm talking she, back to her. I'm walking down the street the next day and my cousin is in my class. He said, he said, man, that looks like your father walking down the street. I said, that can't be my father because <laughs> my father doesn't fly. Mm-hmm. He said, that guy looks just like your dad to me. <laughs> my father came up. He said, son. I said, where do you stay? I said, I got the browns on that time, the black on we go down there. I said, I said, Dad, why are you down here? He said, I heard you uh, sassed your mother. I said, Daddy, Mama said something to me. And Mama was wrong. He said, Son, your mother's always wrong. That's not the point. The point, the point is, <laughs> he said, The point is, you don't, don't respond. I said, Dad, I apologize. He said, you realize you talked to my wife in a certain kind of way? I said, Dad, I apologize. I promise you, it'll never happen again. He said, okay, we shook hands and we took it to me. <laughs> he said, but he said, we're not talking about what your mother did. We're talking about what you did. So that's why I'm down here. Yeah, man, he said, I, you I had to grow up there. <laughs> 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 you know, my, my mother, man, is it college. She wanted to slap me. That's her. That's her. That's her baby. Mm-hmm. If she carried me, that's right. I wouldn't have been here without her. Mm-hmm. My, my, my mother couldn't say nothing. She took to me. Once I learned some sense, thanks to the honor of Elijah Muhammad, you know, I, uh, when I turned 22, I went into the nation. That's when I learned some how I was supposed to really treat my parents. The honor of Elijah Muhammad taught me that. And from that point on, my mom and my daddy was the greatest thing that ever lived with me, so as I was concerned. Mm-hmm. And whatever they messed up with me on, it wasn't on purpose. It was because they did the best they could with what they knew. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. And, and it wasn't their fault if they couldn't do for me what I saw the Honorable Elijah Muhammad doing for me, because they didn't know what he knew. And so, you know, I, I, had, I had a wonderful mother and a wonderful father. My, my brother got whipped once out on the street. And, and he was ditching school. My dad found him. I got beat him right there in the street. And the lady said, who was that man? And my brother told me, I was like, I would have. What did you have? <laughs> what did you have? What did you have? I know them kind of work this way. My daddy drove up on the, on the schoolyard uh, to bring me lunch. Mm-hmm. 
And, um, you know, my dad was, he, he was not real educated, but, uh, you know, he, he was driving around on the schoolyard. And he got, had a whole bullhorn thing. <laughs> my friend was like, I said, I'll make you do it. I didn't mean to get to, to give me some lunch. And um, it was embarrassing, but he didn't, it wasn't, he wasn't the kind of father who cared for what you thought about him for taking care of his children. And I understood that after I grew up. There's a lot of things that I didn't understand that my daddy did until I grew up and got children of my own listen to the teachings, then I knew what I had been blessed with. A lot of times, it takes a long time to learn. We never pay a lot of attention to you know, that you can live. Really? I saw that ever since I was a child. And now, that, that now makes more sense now than it ever did before. Eat to live. Not yes, live to eat. Mm -hmm. Eat to live. We weren't Muslims, but we read that little book, little little book. It wasn't no week long, really. It's your paperback. Yes, sir. We read a book, and I tell you, my cousin Charles, about three eggs, when the whole family read the book, my family were not Muslims, but we ate bean pie, he brought bean pie, uh, Muhammad speaks to the house, and uh, it came out. And I remember I was telling someone when Muhammad speaks to how get my age away in a sense was a mimeograph sheet. <laughs> it, it was not a newspaper yet. Yes, it was sir. a mimeograph sheet that was stapled together. Yes, yes sir. And the brother walked in the neighborhood I grew up in Harlem. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, March what? 7 A, 7 A, 7 A, B, C, and D. Yes, sir. Where you were in Brooklyn or Queens mm -hmm. and Manhattan. And the brother walk around and get his mimeograph sheet and we'd read this this mimeograph sheet. I, I couldn't have been any more than seven or nine years old, you know. Yes, you know so I remember when, when first came out, it wasn't even a newspaper then. And then it became a newspaper. But now my Aunt Dorothy, interesting enough, she was a ghostwriter for Marcus Garvey. So we had been involved, the family had been conscious in some in some sense. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah. Since probably, since she finished high school in 1929. Mm -hmm. So uh, she probably working for Marcus Garvey sometime around 1931. Um, yeah. So our family was, had been a very conscious family from, from me, mother, father, you know, and obviously I said my cousin, we called him Bubba, he was Charles Gage, we all just see him as Bubba to us, you know. Uh, and so we've been involved. In some sense, the long way. Can I buy two people? So yes. now that I am into uh, healthy eating, the truth is, I'm really going back to what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad talked about a long time ago. We've got a lot more information now. And we know now that uh, all that was so correct. Everybody now yes, knows that if you don't live, if you don't eat to live, if you live to eat, you won't be you out of it. <laughs> and that's right. Not a pain. You want that. That's right. All this diabetes, all this kind of stuff, is people who are living to eat rather than eating meat. That's right. We I agree with you. To sharing the information and receiving the information on all levels from uh, the elders to the youth because ba the babies out of the child's uh, out of the mouths of babes you can get a lot of information from people who have a fresh perspective and they have to be open to listening to the elders and open to, you know I had the um, I had a blessing yesterday I had um, have you ever had your words come back to you? <laughs> you know, I, was, I couldn't believe my son. I was talking about, I don't remember the conversation we were, I don't know, remember exactly what we were talking about, but I know I was kind of a little upset about some things I didn't remember to do, and I was going back and forth, and, and my son said, Ma, um, he said, well, he said, don't beat yourself up. He said, uh, you know, remember, he said, the world will do the mother that. <laughs> I remember telling him that. I remember telling him that when he was a, you know, a ten-year-old. I was like, wow, it's, they're listening. They are listening. They're, yeah, they're paying attention. Cash your bread on the work. You know we 75% work. Oh, yes, we are. Yes, we are. Cash your bread on the work. Mm -hmm. Many days. Yeah. 
I mean, you know, you can learn to do this. I mean, so, sometimes you don't need to know everything. You need to be able to look around you and observe because some stuff is right in front of you. It's right in front of you. Why would I be trying to study what piano I should deal with and I got contact with Stevie Wonder? Just ask. <laughs> Is that, is that what the book says? Yes, 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 yes. Yes. That's right. You ask and you yes. say, yes. he was ready to help. That's right. He said, what do you need? You need to ask for this. You need to ask for this. You need to ask for this. It didn't take but 10 minutes. And I put my order in. Yes, sir. And so I'm saying sometimes I will answer the right in front of us. Yes, sir. And I answer in each other. In each other's experience. You know, like without a group. I don't mess with the music. He said, you the manager? You have anything to say about the music? I said, hug it. I went with Joe Pepp. He been singing <laughs> since he was 10 years old. <laughs> what am I doing discussing the music? I tried to tell him how to say it. How to say it. I said, he'll tell you, but we still sometimes, I'm sitting upstairs. He said, the manager's supposed to be upstairs with the music. They doing what? I don't sing, <laughs> I don't <laughs> play the instrument. What am I doing there with the music? Most people, they, they don't even understand what leadership really is. Leadership, true leadership, is knowing when not to. That's right. You, you always find the person more qualified to do a thing. And then, tell them you do that. Whatever I can do to help, let me know. Now that's that's how that's teamwork. That's teamwork. Yeah, yeah. It's just like you know, I watch interviews with people. They, you know, the interviewer. If you got people on there that you want to interview and let the public see, then the, what are you doing all the talking to? <laughs> the people want to hear you. I guess it's enough to know that because I've sit on in front of the TV when when people have had in a, in a, you know <laughs> interviews and I'd be wishing the man get out your man get out your man get out your man so you know you know you know you know you're not you're not uh, taking too much I want you to speak I want you to speak and if yes. I got something I'm gonna chime in on I will mm -hmm. but for the most part I want the people to get to know you. Even the, the callers now, if y'all want to ask them something, they're here. You can unmute your phone and ask a question. But, you know, do it one at a time and be respectful. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, but it, until we as a people, this is something that I, I've always wanted to say, and I know that, that I'm not saying it in offending, because I've, I've seen that right. you truly do care. <laughs> Don't, I'm not telling you you got to always let people uh, be able to contact you. But you should always, if you say you love us, have some kind of way that we can contact you. That's, 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 just, that's just common sense to me. Yes, sir. You know, I mean, you, can, you can't give everybody in the world your number, but you know, I know that. Not in the business you in. But, you know, just like letting them know you're going to be in and out of field at some point. Yes, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. Where they can get to talk with you. Mm -hmm. But if, if it goes like we, like we intend, our people going to see that we're doing more than just talking. Yes, sir. That's, that's, that's what we want to do. I sound like somebody wants to say something. Uh, you, you got your phone off mute? I can hear you. Me and Wiley from the last salon. Are you breaking up? You breaking up? What did you want to add? I can't. Yeah, I can't make out what you're saying. So, oh, and by the way, you are on YouTube and. Everything right now. You got you know, you do two YouTube stations. You know, you're on the air up here, and you're on the air and stay. So we got quite a few people. Okay. 
now you can come and interview them. That's right. But we may never, we never know when we may need a musician to pick up some person that's, that's normal. Well, you got a band up there? Well, well, brother, you know, uh, th- th- you're going to be a, you're going to be a, uh, given a chance to meet up with a lot of people, uh, not just the undisputed truth. There's a whole lot of them. They know of us. And we have a, we have a uh, website. And because sometimes what we do when we go places, we take a band in the area who knows our material, and we take a molecule. The website is called the real undisputed truth dot com. You can put your information there. You can get in on any kind of contact that we would need to do to be able to hook up with one another on that website. The real the real undisputed truth dot com. Just for saying how talented our people are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, already you got a lot of very talented musicians that I know come out of this city. That's right. They come out of Jackson also. Some of the temptations. See, and that we were talking about reasons. See, this is Motown 60 this year. There's a lot of musicians, big time musicians, and singers from Mississippi. We can bring all of this. They were from Mississippi. Yes, what I'm saying. We can bring all of we can we can bring the Motown 60 to fair. Yeah. See, so that I mean, in that way, we we'll incorporate something that can possibly be everywhere. Yes, and we open the people from big towns and small towns. Why not Mississippi? Why not? Why not? There it is. Why not Mississippi? Oh, Williams? I know Alabama. They was all from South. Alabama and Mississippi, yeah. Eddie and Paul. Oh, right. They were from Birmingham. Birmingham, Alabama, okay. Right. Okay. And, and the, one, one other thing that I, I was, was wanting to, to say something about this, the new and disputed truth, when I say the new and disputed truth, I'm only referring to new in the sense that, you know, it's been quite a few years since we have recorded. Yes, you know, so these are the these are undisputed truths that are carrying uh, the mantle that we have before. And we will be appearing the 1st of February at the DIA here in Detroit with a bunch of uh, other stars. Most of us from the Aretha Franklin team, especially the dancers and some of the other folks there. And we're going to be here honoring and celebrating the life of, of Aretha Franklin from the lives of the folks from Detroit, showing our appreciation to her and her legacy. And we want to make sure that that is something that we can live on and something that we can be a part of as a community to appreciate. So we'll be looking forward to folks there, and we will be selling CDs there. Okay. Uh, well, I think that information needs to be given again. Uh, so the performing, the other three truth will be performing on Friday, February the 1st, and the choice to the arts to call the EIA Theater at 7 p.m. Admission is free if you live in Wayne County, Oakland County, or McClellan County. We're going to be on the program with, with John Belgrade, um, EJ of the Enchantment, Bernard uh, Davis, now Bernard Davis Anderson, uh, Mark Scott of the Miracles. I thought it was fifteen dollars. Don't quote me, but I, I think it's somewhere around in, in that range, somewhere like that. Very reasonable. The reason is so mm-hmm. reasonable because when those counties have signed an agreement with the DIA, right? With the DIA advance the money to save the institute, the institute then would would make it free of charge to be from Wayne and Oakland to Clinton County. Okay, and so it's it actually those counties have paid already. Yes. Yes. Then let everybody understand. Yes. <laughs> it ain't like it's yeah, like they get near and pick it. They've been they oh, paid theirs as a unit. They paid plenty of okay. a plenty of time right. and they stayed in the places where they wouldn't be if they hadn't advanced any of that money. Yes, sir. Very good. Very good. <laughs> okay. Did we have another thought? Yes. 
That's what I just got on him about. Yeah. Yeah. SOS Graphic Design provides agency quality professional graphic design services from established companies to startups and individuals, creating a simple logo to complete rebranding and delivering visual communication with print media. Everything SOS Graphic Design does has a single unifying objective, to set your business apart. We are at your service. Call 313-342-2166. That's 313-342-2166. 342-2166 or online at www.sosgraphicdesigns.com Tis the season for unique and beautiful gift items. If you've ever stood in a greeting card aisle searching for the perfect card that echoed how you felt but still couldn't find what you were looking for, then Designs by Deej is for you. We are a greeting card and gift shop that specialize in unique and three-dimensional handmade greeting cards for all occasions. These are not your cookie cutter cards that are slid through a printing press. Nope, we offer one-of-a-kind keepsake items that will make excellent decor items for your mantle or coffee table. The enticing sculptural beauty of one of these works of art begs to be displayed, not only for its aesthetic, but to remember the thoughtfulness of the one who gave it. This holiday season, choose Designs by Deej for all of your handmade needs. 
We also take custom orders. Can't choose that option in stores. Call Designs by Deech today at 601-451-9536 or visit us on the web at www.designsbydeech.com. Also check out our brand new illustrated gift items. Well, we're moving on. Come check out the New Sisters Braid 2 Hair Braiding and Natural Hair Care Salon, located at 18070 Mount Elliott Street. Our new salon is spacious with adequate parking, Wi-Fi, and all brand new state-of-the-art salon equipment. Come meet your local hair braiders and natural hair care specialists, and check out our many hair care services, such as hair treatments, box braids, corn rolls, tree braids, Havana twists, children's braids, natural twists, lock extensions, kinky twists, goddess locks, updos, full weaves, and more. Please Please feel free to visit us on the web at www.sistersbraid2.com or call 313-826-0498. Here at Sisters Braid 2, we offer exceptional care for exceptional hair. We look forward to seeing you. Sisters Braid 2 is a proud recipient of the Unity and Rebuilding Fund. This is The Real Campu, keeping all my people unified. Please be sure to download my album, Campu, Birth of a New Nation, and my two latest hit singles, My People Rise and Be Good to Us, with voiceover skits, with inspirational poetry, hip-hop, and harmony. Download your MP3 single copy of My People Rise and Be Good to Us, with voiceover skits, or the album, Birth of a New Nation, all available on iTunes, Amazon, and other online stores. Don't forget, Birth of a New Nation by Campu. Now you can watch WHPR TV 33 on Fire Stick. Catch all of your favorites. Stay informed. Don't miss a minute of your favorite talk shows. Call, text, tweet, post. WHPR TV 33 is worldwide on Fire Stick. For more information, go to firesticktvnetwork.com or call us at 313-868-6612. WHPR TV 33, a Watkins Broadcasting Company.